Today is the last day of campaigning and you can expect the political parties to hunker down and focus on their key messages. For the People's Action Party, the message is on how they offer the best team to see Singapore through the COVID pandemic. The Workers' Party is banking on how they will bring alternative voices in a parliament dominated by the PAP. Now, two other opposition parties have had high profiles this year, the Progress Singapore Party, PSP, and the Singapore Democratic Party. The PSP says it stands for a compassionate Singapore, and the SDP's manifesto includes positions on GST, retrenchment benefits, and income for retirees. So with this being the last day, we can expect these messages to be reinforced today. Because of the COVID situation, a lot of the campaigning has been done digitally this year. So uh, it's been a digital campaign like no other. There's been the usual sharing of memes and funny videos on social media, WhatsApp and Telegram. But there's also been more serious content being shared because parties have had to go on air and online given rallies are disallowed this year. But uh, because it is G season, people do tune in uh, more than they ordinarily would. The online discussion has been pretty partisan and heated, although I think still skewed towards the opposition point of view. But, you know, whether social media sentiment translates into actual vote share will be something interesting to see. While you may have a good laugh over a video clip of a candidate that's been so widely shared, even your tech-averse elderly mother saw it on her Mahjong WhatsApp group, does that necessarily translate into a vote against the candidate or a vote for his opponent, assuming you are even in the candidate's vote to be voting for him or her? Or, you know, do voters make up their minds based on other more serious considerations than a funny video? Besides the influence of social media, another unknown in a general election is the swing vote or the undecided vote. And, you know, traditionally, the undecided group can range from 10% to 40%, depending on how established the candidates are. Among swing voters will, of course, be those who are politically apathetic. But the majority have been adopting a wait-and-see position. So, you know, for this group, their vote isn't automatically based on the PAP's track record or the opposition's argument of being a check on the PAP. Rather, they adopt a wait-and-see position and they will use their vote tactically to send a signal. We actually saw this in 2015 when the voters of Aljunit GRC gave the Workers' Party a second term, but only just. The opposition party won by just 2,600 plus votes. Voters were saying they want opposition, but don't take us for granted. We also see you know, the swing vote um, you know, at work in PAP wards, which still do win, but with much narrower margins. So the voters here are saying that they want the PAP in power, but the MP needs to buck up, or there are government policies they don't like. So on Friday night, these are the things that the Straits Times newsroom will be looking out for. Number one, the PAP vote share in this crisis pandemic year and also how the 4G leaders fare in wards like East Coast, West Coast and Sengkang GRCs. Number two, will the Workers' Party retain Aljunit and Hogang under a new leader? And, you know, specifically, has the party been able to retain its Chinese-speaking ground with the retirement of Mr. Lo Tia Kiang? Uh, thirdly, will Dr. Tan Cheng Bok's personal popularity be able to garner his party a win in the big West Coast GRC? And finally, how will the SDP fare in the two single wards of Bukit Panjan and Bukit Batok where its uh, leaders are contesting? So we'll be going live on Friday night with the results. Please stay tuned. <laughs>